What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to do a video on my kind of top five uh, upgrades I like to do on a 5.9 Cummins. This is a common rail. Uh, there's also gonna be kind of a sixth one that I'd say is more optional. You're probably gonna end up having to do it eventually. So stay tuned to the end for that. But uh, yeah, I'm just out here with Bronx. We're kind of exploring. This is a place I actually used to hang out back when I was a kid. But if you can see, it's just littered with trash now. It's just disgusting how people can just dump their garbage here. It uh, frustrates me. But anyways, we're going to get into this video here. If you find it useful, please like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, check out the Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. So I'm going to do these in the order that I would do them personally if I got a plain Jane Bonestock 5.9 common rail. These are exactly the order I would do them in. Uh, we're just going to start things off. Obviously, we're going to get an exhaust on it. Mine has a five inch uh, Flow Pro exhaust. A four inch would be fine too, but basically you wanna let your truck breathe. Kinda the factory muffler can be a bit restricting. So if you get an aftermarket kit, and if you, even if you get it with a muffler, you don't have to get it straight pipe, but if you get a muffler, it's more of a resonator. So like you could still look, hold it up and kinda see right through it. There's no, uh, no rest airflow restrictions in them. So that, that's the first thing I would do. Plus, I mean, you're driving one of these trucks, you wanna hear it and they sound so good. Uh, especially if they're straight piped. I know some places they don't like you to have straight pipes, but even with a, with a resonator, they just, they sound awesome. So the first thing I do pretty much to any vehicle, regardless of what it is, even if it's a dirt bike, is I upgrade the exhaust. What do you think of that one? Pretty good? Next one's gonna be under the hood. Now keep in mind, this is just kind of my opinions. Uh, I mean, everyone's gonna have different upgrades, what they think's best, but uh, this is just, if anyone values my opinion, this is it. Also comment your favorite upgrade you like to do to your truck, whether it be one of these ones, or maybe it's one that I'm totally forgetting. So make sure you let me know. Look at this, this is what the nice Saskatchewan roads do with all the salt. I put like a clear coat on here thinking it would be good enough, but it's not. So I'm gonna have to buff this down and uh, repaint this far from stock AC cover with some actual good paint because it's just completely rusted out after the winter. But anyways, my second thing I do to pretty much every vehicle, especially a 5.9 Cummins, is I upgrade the air intake. Now with the, the newer 6.7 Cummins, like fourth gens and fifth gens, the factory ram air is actually pretty good. So I don't think it's as big of a necessity as on like a 5.9. But here I have an SNB Cold air intake, I run an oiled filter. This one's pretty much ready for cleaning. No, it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, this is just gonna get you a lot better airflow. It's gonna give you a little more power, a little bit better fuel economy. Uh, it's a little dirty down there, but uh, yeah, that's the second thing. They look a lot better and they sound a lot better. You can hear more turbo whistle, which is another cool thing that they do. Um, and then yeah, you have the option of getting an oiled filter or a dry filter for it. Uh, it's kind of your choice. They're both great. All right. Number three, what you guys probably do right off the bat, and that is a programmer, a tuner. So I have an MM3 tuner. It's got custom tunes on my truck because I have some things like bigger turbo, other engine upgrades, and I'll soon have bigger injectors and a bigger injection pump. So I have custom MM3 tunes, but like other options like Smarty Juniors are a great option. Uh, it doesn't have to be MM3. Uh, and I mean, unless you have, unless you're doing like bigger turbo and injectors and, and that kind of stuff, you don't really need anything custom. So just any generic uh, 5.9 tuner should be fine. So what that tuner is going to do is it's going to obviously give you more power. That's the number one reasons why guys do it. But I say be careful with that just because uh, if you don't have other supporting mods, which we'll get to shortly here, uh, you, you, you run the risk of damaging your engine. But another great thing that they do is uh, when you program your truck, typically your fuel economy goes up as long as you're a little responsible with your throttle pedal there. But uh, yeah, so you get some more power and uh, some better fuel economy. And so yeah, that's my third thing to do is uh, tuner. And number four, this one applies to pretty much any diesel truck out there too, but it is an aftermarket lift pump. So if you can see in here, I have a fast fuel system and it kind of just hides underneath here. You can see there's the filters, kind of if you can see it. And what that fast fuel system does is it's a much better upgraded lift pump uh, and it supplies a ton of fuel right up to my CP3 injection pump. So it's never hurting for fuel. And uh, you wanna do this with that tuner, especially because if you're cranking up your tuner, you're gonna be calling for more fuel in your injectors. And sometimes your stock uh, 
your stock lift pump can't keep up. Another great thing is uh, they're super easy to service. There's a fuel filter and a water separate, separator right there. Uh, super easy to get at, super easy to change. And uh, they cross over to like hundreds of different companies filters. You want to run cat filters, you can. You want to run Wix filters, you can. You want Ronald, duh. You want to run Hastings filters, you can do that. So it, it makes it a lot, it's way easier to find filters. Uh, filters are affordable because you have so many different brands to choose from. They're easy to service. And uh, what you can also do, this one's kind of a bonus, but down in here, that's where the factory fuel filter is. But see, mine's gone. I have a fleece fuel filter delete there. Uh, and then it just bypasses it. Here's the hose right from my fast going right to my CP3 injection pump. So yeah, you can get rid of that uh fuel filter in the engine bay open it up a little bit that's kind of a canister filter and it's a little bit harder to service it's not bad but uh yeah another thing they do with with these uh, lift pumps and you don't have to get a fast you can get a uh, air dog or uh bd diesel whichever one you want they're all great uh, but they also take all the air out of the fuel because there's still sometimes some air in the fuel so they completely get all the air out of the fuel uh, more pressure better filtration they're just super good for your injection pump and your injectors. If you want them to last a long time, then an aftermarket lift pump like that is definitely the way to go. All right, number five has actually nothing to do with performance, but I noticed a massive difference when I put this on my truck. And what I'm talking about is this uh, steering box brace or whatever you want to call it. You can kind of use it in conjunction with this dual steering stabilizer. But uh, but no, this brace right here, your your steering steering box brace, or I don't know what it's called. I always forget the actual name. But uh, this bracket stiffens up your steering box, and I'll put a little thing right up here in the description or in the top of the video on a video I did comparing it, and the difference was huge. I had so much steering slop before I before I had that brace. I thought I needed a new a new steering box, but I got that. That one's a BD Diesel product. It's great. Um, but yeah, it was ridiculous how much it tightened up my steering wheel. Like it feel, felt like a wholly, a totally different truck. I thought I needed a gearbox and I guess I don't. Um, so that's a huge upgrade. And like I said, you could kind of use it in conjunction if you wanted to get that dual steering stabilizer as well. Those are great upgrades just to kind of keep that front end stiff on, uh, on, a, on one of these 5.9 Cummins because you don't want to get the death wobble. I've never had the death wobble, but I know people that have. Uh, but doing stuff like this seems to help a lot. All right, now this one is kind of like the sixth thing you can do. And like I said, you're probably going to have to do it at some point. Uh, and that is going to be ARP head studs. So if you look on your truck, you probably just have a bolt kind of right here. And I mean, they're obviously all underneath your valve cover here, uh, kind of in with your rockers. But uh, they bolt your cylinder head to the engine block. And see, I have studs, if you can see them, there's a, a stud there and then you spin a, put a washer on and you spin a nut on over top, torque them down. And what those are gonna do is they're not going to stretch like a head bolt does. So especially if you're running uh, a, hot, a hotter tune, like let's say you're putting a 100 horsepower tune on your 5.9 and you romp on it, your cylinder temperatures and pressures are gonna be way higher. Uh, and it can cause those factory head bolts to actually stretch just a tiny little bit, but that's enough to get some pressure out of your cylinders and into your cooling system or blow your head gaskets. And uh, then you're pressuring up your cooling system or you're burning coolant off or, you know, you got to do head gaskets. So, so here's what I say is like, you're probably going to have to do it. Now, uh, when do you want to do it is up to you. Me personally, unless I had a brand new truck, I wouldn't do it until the head gasket goes because it's not very hard to do head gaskets on these trucks. They are probably the one of the cheapest diesels to do a head gasket on. Uh, so my advice is if you have, you know, something with 100 or 200,000 miles on it, just wait, let your head gasket blow. And then when it blows, replace your head gasket and use ARP head studs instead of, they, they say you can't even use, reuse your factory head bolts anyways. So you're gonna either have to spend money to get new head bolts or just spend the extra money and i know they're kind of expensive but spend the extra money and get arp head studs and you should never have to do this job again unless you just 
put a stupid high tune on your truck and you drive like a idiot. So those are the main things I would do. I mean, obviously I have a lot more upgrades. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about them too, in case you guys are wondering, but uh, yeah, those are the, f the top five. And then, like I said, head studs is number six. I would uh, strongly recommend you do to your truck. If we go back to steering on mine, another thing I did was actually this whole entire uh, tie rod setup and you know this I upgraded to the new style. It's a t-style steering this whole this whole steering system is from Moog and it replaces everything basically on the front and uh, These trucks factory come with a Y style steering which is more prone to death wobble and I upgraded to that t-style steering So that's the same steering that you'd see on like a 2015 Cummins is on my 2003 I have the BD diesel screamer turbo. That's the same uh, turbo. That's out of a 67 Cummins It's a VGT turbo. So it's pretty loud. It's got a Nice exhaust brake to it. Uh, it's a 64 mil, so once I get my bigger injectors and bigger CP3, I should be able to put some, some decent power on it anyways. When I did my head gasket, I also upgraded my push rods and my valve springs. If I remember correctly, they were Manhattan valve springs and push rods, I think. But yeah, what they do is just, when you're kind of running at a higher RPM, the stronger valve springs will keep everything in, in place, you know, and you don't start over revving your engine. Uh, and then the the bigger the bigger push rods are they're just thicker they're stronger they can handle more abuse so I did that just because I knew I was building my truck up a bit obviously my truck has a suspension lift so I went with a BDS six inch and I went with a long arm basically the long arm uh, these are your long arms so they push your front axle forward to where it would normally sit uh, when your truck is stock because if you think about it if you grab the truck and you pulled it up to lift it your your front and rear axles are kind of gonna they're gonna move in a little bit like that so by getting that long arm kit it pushes your front axle back to where it's supposed to ride so it's just a much better ride than if you just if you just have your regular control arms and then i got uh, bd diesel uh traction bars here just uh to kind of eliminate some wheel hop and uh to make it so that under extreme load your diff will actually move uh, and it's just really hard on your u-joints and everything so with those traction bars it just really keeps your truck solid i'll put a little thing right up in there if you're interested in seeing traction bars and what they do i have another video on that as well but that's most of the upgrades on my unit like i said bigger injectors and a bigger cp3 are coming soon there's obviously some cosmetic upgrades i have as well but you guys don't really care about those that much. I don't think anyways. But if you made it to this far, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's a topic you want me to cover or a specific video that you want me to do. And if I'm capable of doing it, I will do it for you guys. I'm more than happy to take suggestions. I do kind of run out of ideas for videos. So when you guys are actually giving me ideas, it helps out a lot. And yeah, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. I do a lot of diesel related content uh, and check out the Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.